L9859 is an often overlooked red dwarf system about 34 light years away from Earth, with at least four planets around it. Its central star is 27% the mass of the Sun, and only 1% is bright. But upon closer inspection, L9859 turns out to be one of the most interesting systems we've ever come across. It bears a striking resemblance to the well-known TRAPPIST-1, and like that system, its planets are extremely interesting, and have the potential to host some of the most exotic environments known. Welcome to episode 6 of my Grand Tour series, where I cover individual systems in more depth. When you're done watching this, be sure to check out the rest of the series, like a Grand Tour of Alpha Centauri, 55 Cancri, TRAPPIST-1, Upsilon Andromedae, and Mu Are. L9859 and TRAPPIST-1 are similar in a lot of ways. Both are red dwarfs, though L9859 is three times more massive. Both are a similar distance away from Earth, 34 and 41 light years respectively. And both have a system of several Earth-sized planets circling them. But that's where the similarities end. TRAPPIST-1 is far older than L9859, estimated to be just 800 million years old, compared to TRAPPIST-1's 7.6 billion years old. L9859's planets are also generally bigger than TRAPPIST-1's, and have the chance of having much more diverse environments. Because of this, I personally consider this system to be more deserving of the hype than TRAPPIST-1, and I hope you'll see why by the end of this video. There are four confirmed planets in L9859, with two additional unconfirmed ones, meaning this system could have as many as six planets, assuming there aren't any others we haven't discovered yet. We'll start this tour with the first confirmed planet, L9859b. The Wikipedia article for this star says there's an unconfirmed planet, L9859g, closer to the star than b, but I can't find any information about it, so we'll be skipping it. L9859b is the smallest known planet in the system, at just 40% the mass of Earth, or between the sizes of Earth and Mars. It takes about 2.2 days to make a full orbit of its star, and is about 85% of Earth's radius. It's one of the smallest known planets outside the solar system, with only planets like Proxima d being smaller. Because it transits its star from our perspective, it's been possible to determine the atmosphere and temperature of this planet. Unfortunately, 2022 observations didn't detect any signs of an atmosphere on L9859b, indicating that it's probably airless. However, an atmosphere with high altitude hazes couldn't be ruled out. But given L9859b's low mass, the fact it orbits a red dwarf, which are famous for stripping away atmospheres, and its close orbit and high temperature, I would bet that the no atmosphere scenario is far more likely. It has a temperature measured by the TESS telescope of about 330 degrees Celsius, or 626 Fahrenheit, which is colder than Mercury and Venus. Despite its star being just 1% the Sun's brightness, L9859b receives 22 times more light than Earth receives from the Sun, and is almost certainly tidally locked, so it has a permanent day side and permanent night side. All in all, L9859b is probably a typical example of a small rocky planet around a red dwarf. We've seen several planets similar to it, like the even smaller Proxima d on a 5-day orbit around Proxima Centauri, or the colder but bigger Trapez-1b on its 1.5-day orbit. The planets of L9859 get much more interesting after this. L9859c is the next planet of the system, and it's over 5 times more massive than b at 2.2 Earth masses. It takes about 3.6 days to make an orbit of its star, though still far too close to be in the habitable zone where temperatures are ripe for liquid water to exist. It has a radius about 40% larger than Earth's, and, like B, transits its star. So, searches for an atmosphere around this planet were conducted as well. So far, the results have been mixed. A study from 2023 says inconclusive evidence of an atmosphere around L9859c was found, but is yet to be confirmed. It can't reliably say anything for certain, but has very marginal, inconclusive evidence of an atmosphere. Then a 2024 study using James Webb found no evidence of an extended atmosphere. In fact, based on James Webb observations, we can say a lot about what L9859c isn't. It doesn't have a hydrogen and helium dominated atmosphere, meaning it isn't a gas planet. High metallicity atmospheres, 300 times more metal rich than the sun, were also ruled out, and so were atmospheres made of pure methane. So two main scenarios remain. Either C is airless like B, or has a thick atmosphere composed primarily of carbon dioxide and water. So far, we don't know which one it is. But given the fact that C is pretty big as far as rocky planets go, and there is very, very small amounts of evidence of an atmosphere from 2023, I'm cautiously optimistic that C could have an atmosphere. If it's not airless, then it could be like a super Venus, with a very thick CO2-dominated atmosphere, but with a lot of water as well. But just be aware that it being airless is also a strong possibility, and right now, we unfortunately can't say anything for certain other than its size and orbit. However, it is also probably tidally locked. The same cannot be said about the next planet, L9859d. 
L9859D is, right now, probably the most interesting planet in the system. It's similar in size to C at about 1.94 Earth masses and 1.5 Earth radii. It takes about 7.4 days to orbit its star, making it again too close to be in the habitable zone. Now you might have noticed something. L9859D is much less massive than C, but it's bigger in radius. That can only mean one thing. L9859D is significantly less dense than C. In fact, density measurements of the planet seem to show that it can't be made of entirely rock like B and C. It must have a very thick extended atmosphere. Or, more excitingly, the lower density could potentially be explained by oceans. I should clarify that there have been no direct observations of water on L9859D. However, one possible explanation for the low density is that 30% of this planet is water by mass. If you recall, I said this planet was too hot to be habitable, as it's nowhere near the habitable zone. But sometimes, liquid water can exist in boiling temperatures if there's enough pressure. If a planet has a thick enough atmosphere, the weight of all the gas could crush water to such an extent it's prevented from evaporating, being forced into a liquid state. Because of this, there could be planets with liquid water that are simultaneously hundreds of degrees. These oceans would be nothing like Earth's. For example, you wouldn't be able to just tell where the ocean ends and the atmosphere begins. Both the water and air would blend together in a mix that makes it unclear where to separate the two. Unlike on Earth, where we have a defined sea level, boiling ocean planets like this would have no clear boundary on what separates ocean and air. So, while not confirmed, L9859D could very well be a planet like this, with even the potential for oceans hundreds or thousands of miles deep. But that's not all, as observations from James Webb have confirmed that L9859D has an atmosphere. For the large majority of rocky red dwarf planets observed by James Webb, results have either been inconclusive or negative. Trappist 1, B, and C have strong evidence of being airless, and so do the similar rocky planets Kua Kua, Tahe, GJ1132b, and GJ1252b, but not L9859d. Several studies have come out showing with very high confidence that this planet does indeed have an atmosphere. While still not 100% confirmed, the chances of this atmosphere actually being there are very high. In this atmosphere, hints of sulfur were detected, in the form of hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide. If confirmed, this could hint at volcanism occurring on the planet, as those gases can be produced by volcanoes. While we can't say much about how thick this atmosphere could be or what it means for the planet's hypothetical oceans, this is an exciting discovery nonetheless. This makes L9859D part of a very exclusive club of small planets with hints of atmospheres discovered by James Webb, the other ones being LHS-1140b, Janssen, and K2141b. All in all, L9859D is an extremely exciting find. Not only does it have strong sides of having an atmosphere, despite being a relatively small planet around a red dwarf, it could also, in theory, possess boiling oceans hundreds of miles deep. This opens up a lot of interesting questions about the habitability of red dwarfs. If planets this close to their stars can host an atmosphere, then what does that say about planets further away in the habitable zone? Also, there's some evidence that red dwarfs blow away their volatiles like water during formation, which should leave their inner planets extremely dry. Assuming this is true, then how did L9859D get such a low density? Obviously, this planet and others like it are going to need to be studied a lot more if we want answers to these questions. But there's still one more confirmed planet in the system, and that's L9859E. L9859E is the largest confirmed planet in the system. However, unlike B, C, and D, it doesn't transit its star from our perspective. Because of this, we don't know its orbital inclination or radius, which then also means we only know its minimum mass. L9859E is at least three Earth masses, though depending on how inclined its orbit is, it could be much bigger. It takes 12.7 days to make a full orbit of its star, and is still too close to be in the habitable zone. Unfortunately, because its radius and true mass are unknown, we can't say much about E's environment. In fact, we know even less about it than C. It could potentially be a hot rocky planet like B or C, or maybe it could have a low density like D. Because of its high mass and larger distance from its star, its chances of hosting an atmosphere could be pretty good. But what form the atmosphere is in, if it even has one at all, is anyone's guess. Because of its lack of transiting, we likely won't know much about this planet, the biggest in its system, for a very long time. There's still one planet further from a star than E, L9859F. However, planet F has not yet been confirmed to exist. There is some evidence for its existence, but has not yet been definitively proven. But if it is real, then F takes about 23 days to orbit its star, double the time it takes E. This means that if F exists, it will be right in the middle of L9859's habitable zone. 
Also, if it exists, then like E, it doesn't transit. So it would have all the same problems as E. No known radius, only a minimum mass, which in this case is greater than 2.4 Earth masses. It would also have a decently high orbital eccentricity of 0.21, meaning its orbit is somewhat of an oval shape. Because of its potentially high mass and even larger distance from its star, then hopefully the chance for F to host an atmosphere could be high. That is, assuming it even exists at all, which it might not. We unfortunately can't say anything else about it at this time. With that, that's the end of the planets of L9859. The system is essentially a larger, more promising version of TRAPPIST-1, which has only received a fraction of the hype it deserves. There are potentially five or six planets orbiting this star, one of which could have a sulfur-rich atmosphere and boiling oceans. These planets are all huddled so close together that if you are standing on the surface of B, then C would be larger than Earth's moon in the sky. The night skies on these planets are probably amazing, and their environments equally so. L9859, combined with TRAPPIST-1, begins to paint a picture of the diversity red dwarf systems can have. While their planets might remain small, their environments could be just as diverse as the planets of larger stars. L9859's planets are generally bigger than TRAPPIST-1's, and so have increased chances of having atmospheres and withstanding their star's flares and XUV radiation. All in all, L9859 is definitely one of the most interesting red dwarf systems we've ever found, and hopefully we can find out more about it soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out the rest of the Grand Tour series, as well as my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.